Okay, we are working at our unit three review, slope and graphing linear equations. Our first standard is that we will be able to um, calculate and interpret the rate of change, which is another word for slope of a function over a specified interval. Estimate the change from a graph. So we'll actually calculate the change from the graph. So we wanna find the slope of the line indicated. So this first example, we have a vertical line. So we've talked about slope, we've made the comparison to skiing. Um, we know that we can't ski on a completely vertical slope, right? So um, M is undefined. Okay, but let's prove that algebraically so that if we ever forget which one's undefined, which one is zero, um, then we can always come back to our calculation and, and know it with confidence that we have it correct. So remember that slope is our change in y over change in x. Change in y over change in x, delta y over delta x. So our change in y is y sub 2 minus y sub 1. Change in x would be x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So we can prove that this is undefined um, algebraically. And again, if we uh, can't, if we ever forget, we don't have to rely on our memory. We can always figure it out. Okay, so we choose any two points. They gave us two nice points, so we may as well use them. Negative 1, 0. And negative 1, negative 3. Okay, so um, remember our coordinates are always in alphabetical order. I'll call this point point one, and I'll call this point, point two. So this is x sub two, comma, y sub two. This one would be x sub one, comma, y sub one. Parentheses, okay. So a change in y would be negative three minus zero. Over, change in x, negative one minus negative one. Negative three minus zero is negative three. Negative one, take away negative one is zero. Okay, never subtract, add the opposite. If you wanna do it that way, it's fine. Um, but whichever way you'd like to work with your integers, you're dividing by zero. So mathematically, we can't take th negative three and divide it among into zero groups. Okay, so let's say you have a, a debt of $3. You can't just say, oh, well, nobody's gonna repay that. It's, it's in existence, it exists. So we can't take something and put it into zero groups. So if it were like positive three, same thing. If you had $3, you could divide it among one person or two people or three people or as many as you want, but you can't divide it by zero. So in, even if you tried that on your calculator, your calculator, here's another, if you ever forget, you can always check that on your calculator, negative three divided by zero. Your calculator says um, you made an error. You can't divide by zero, all right? So you can't take something and make it into no groups, make it not exist. So M is equal to undefined. So we can memorize that for sure. And if we ever forget, we can calculate it out. Okay, number two. Um, so first of all, we wanna remember when we're looking at slopes graphically, um, we have to take into account to, that we don't forget that it, to indicate whether it's positive or negative, okay? So when we look at this line, we can immediately see that it has a negative slope. Um, we read lines the same way we read sentences, from left to right. So as we read our line from left to right, it's decreasing, it's going down. And that's how we know that the slope is negative. So then we wanna make a reference triangle. We can choose any two points. They chose those two points, um, that's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and use those. We can, but we don't need those points to be chosen for us. We can always select our own points. So then we make our, our reference triangle. Good. Okay, and then we want to do the rise over run. Remember that's change in y over change in x. <clears throat> so from our starting point, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Our rise is seven, and our run is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So our rise over run is negative seven over nine. rise over run. So our slope is negative because as we read it left to right, it's falling. Rise is seven, run is nine. And this needs to be simplified. Seven nines is already simplified. Okay, so we're finished with that. Okay, our slope for this problem. As we read it from left to right, it's increasing. So we know our slope is positive. We make our reference triangle.
okay? Our rise is one and our run is one, two, three. So our slope is one third, okay? Horizontal line always has a slope of zero. So that's if you're thinking of building a house or a deck, okay, installing a floor, you want your slope to be zero, okay? We want zero slope, we want it perfectly level. So we want no sloping at all, just zero slope. Um, so we can also calculate that algebraically and prove it algebraically in case we ever forget because sometimes kids confuse these two. So let's prove that algebraically. That's our change in y over change in x, okay? So this point is two, negative one. So it's not m, just a point. Sorry about that. And this point is four, negative one. Okay, change in y, negative one minus negative one over change in x, two minus four. It's arbitrary which one you call point one and which one you call point two, okay? Um, so in our numerator, we have negative one minus negative one. You can do never subtract, add the opposite to get zero, or you can say negative one, take away negative one to get zero, however you like to think of it with integers, whichever way you learn to work with integers in seventh grade is fine. Um, so I like never subtract, add the opposite. So we change the minus to a plus, but whenever we do that, we have to change the sign after it to its opposite because we just changed a minus to a plus. We have to change the negative one to a positive one. So negative one plus one is zero. Okay, and then our denominator, two minus four is negative two. So what is zero divided by negative two? Zero. So our slope is zero. So we can remember that and if we ever forget, we can always fall back on the algebra and show it and find it, calculate it out. Okay, so that was our first standard. Find the slope of a line given a graph. Our next standard is find the slope of a line given two points. And we, we had a little practice right here because I wanted to help you remember that even if you thought you had these memorized and then later forget, you can always fall back on the algebra and calculate it out for yourself. Okay, so we had a little bit of built-in practice with these two for the next standard. Okay, number one, find the slope of the line that passes between the points one negative 10 and one 12. Okay, so our change in y, rise over change in x, rise over run. So I'll call this point one and I'll call this point two. And again, it's arbitrary which one you call which. Okay, so x of one, y sub one, x sub two, y sub two. Okay, so change in y, remember, is y sub two minus y sub one, and change in x is x sub two minus x sub one. So change in y, 12 minus negative 10. Change in x, one minus one. <clears throat> so here we have, um, never subtract, add the opposite. 12 plus 10 is 22. One minus one is zero. Uh, we can't divide by zero. <clears throat> Okay, so 22 divided by zero is undefined. So this is undefined slope, right? And that should make sense to you because if you think of these two points, like if this is my um, coordinate plane, okay? One negative 10, one negative 10, 112, 112. That would be a vertical line, okay? So that is um, undefined slope. Number two, find the slope of the line between negative two, negative two, and four, negative 12. Okay, so again, slope is, here's our slope formula. Okay, so get used to seeing it this way with the slope formula, delta y over delta x, and then we know that it's rise because change in y is the change in the, the vertical change, and then change in x, that's the run, Okay, is the change in our x-axis. Okay, they're one. All right, so again, uh, we'll call this one point one. I call that one point two, and it doesn't really matter. You can um, flip those around and the math would work out the same. So change in y, negative 12 minus negative two over change in x, four minus 
negative two. Okay, um, never subtract, add the opposite. Negative 12 plus two is negative 10. Never subtract, add the opposite. Four plus two is six. Okay, and this is um, negative 10, six. It's not a good answer because it's not simplified. So we need to remember our slope has to be simplified or it's incorrect. In math, we don't wanna have two possible, so if this is correct, okay, then, so our, our simplified slope is, so 10 and six are both even, they're both divisible by two, so we get negative five thirds. That's the correct answer. So if I say, oh, I can just double those and get um, negative 10, six, that's correct. I just didn't simplify. Well, no, as mathematicians, we, if we followed that logic, there would be infinitely many correct answers. And mathematicians and scientists do not want to have infinitely many correct answers. We want one agreed upon format. So we have to have that in simplest form. It makes things um, make more sense. There's um, consistency, reliability, predictability. Um, communication becomes simpler when we all have an agreed upon format. So if you don't have it simplified, that is incorrect. Okay, it's not, oh, it's fine, you forgot to simplify. No, it's not right. And so we um, need to make sure that we remember to simplify. Um, if you're not great with simplifying, I would recommend just reviewing your math facts so you have those math facts kind of right at the forefront of your mind so that you can count on those um, when you're trying to simplify and look for common factors, okay? Three, find the slope of the line that passes between negative seven, four, and negative 10, three, okay? So again, change in y over change in x. So three minus four over and then we go in that same corresponding order. If I did three minus four, I called that my point two and this my point one. I have to go in that same corresponding order for the x values, negative 10 minus negative seven. Okay, so three minus four is negative one. 10 minus negative seven, never subtract, add the opposite. Negative 10 plus seven is negative three. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. So our slope is one third. Number four, find the slope of the line that passes between negative six, two, and seven, two. Well, I noticed right away um, that my y values are the same, okay? So if you can envision that on your coordinate plane, negative six, two, let's just say is here, and maybe a little higher, that's okay. And then um, seven, two, maybe would be right here. So we know that we're going to have a horizontal line, which is perfectly level. So we know we're going to have a slope of zero. Okay, so we can, we can do that. And that's, I'm happy with that work. That's me, that's you showing me your work. Um, let's prove it algebraically though, because we want to be able to always fall back on the algebra. And then if we didn't notice that these y values were the same and we went ahead and calculated it out, we want to make sure that we understand how to interpret the answer to that um, slope calculation. So change in y, two minus two. Change in x, we go in that same corresponding order, seven minus negative six. Okay, two minus two is zero, seven minus negative six. Never subtract, add the opposite. So it's seven plus positive six, that's 13. Zero divided by 13 is zero. I have zero dollars and I'm sharing that with 13 people. We each have zero dollars, right? Zero divided by 13 is zero. So our slope is zero. We can show it with our visual um, imagery um, or we can calculate it algebraically. Okay, so that is the standard calculate the slope of a line given two points. A slope application problem. Um, Cedar Point is, so in this problem, um, this standard, we need to be able to understand slope as it pertains to real world situations. Cedar Point is creating a new roller coaster that will have a steep drop. A picture of the drop is below. To pass inspection, the slope must, uh, excuse me, to pass inspection, slope of at least three. Okay, so it, it must have a slope of at least three. So they want it to be really steep. Unlike most of our other problems where we've had, you know, limitations like, you know, wheelchair ramps and things like that. So for this one, we want our slope to be three or more. We want a steep slope. Determine if this ramp would pass inspection and justify mathematically your answer. So let's go ahead and we want our slope 
to be greater than or equal to three. That's our criteria. So let's calculate our slope. Our rise is 35 feet and our run is 10 feet. So 35 divided by 10 is 3.5. So our slope is greater than three because it's 3.5. So yes, the slope is steep enough. Okay, so that's part of your answer. And a lot of you are stopping right there and you're missing this part. So you're missing out on points. You didn't justify mathematically your answer. Okay, so you need to tell how you know that. All right, you need to explain to me that you understand what the criteria was and how our slope compares to it. Um, the minimum slope is three and This um, picture has a slope of 3.5. So 3.5 is greater than three, okay? Number two, um, <clears throat> there is a wheelchair ramp being installed in front of a building. In order to meet city inspection, the standards the slope of the ramp must be less than 45 hundredths, okay? So our criteria is that our slope must be less than, and it doesn't say less than or equal to, it says less than 0 0.45. Calculate the slope of the ramp and determine whether or not this ramp will pass inspection. <clears throat> so this ramp is 30, or excuse me, 20 over 30, rise over run, Okay, which simplifies to two thirds, which if you know your standard calculations, like two divided by three is you know, uh, 0 0.6 repeating. So M is equal to 0 0.6 repeating. Okay, um, that's larger than 45 hundredths. Okay, so the slope had to be less than 45 hundredths. Okay, that's a number that's less than half. This slope is two thirds, which is a number that's more than half. So this ramp is too steep. and would not pass inspection. Okay, its slope is 0 0.6 repeating and the maximum allowable slope was 4,500. actually had to be less than 45 hundredths. So in the maximum of the slope of an approved ramp must be less than 45 hundredths. Which is actually probably really way too steep in reality anyway, but let's just stick with the numbers. Okay, so again, that um, standard, oops, I went off the screen there, let me show that. So that standard was um, using slope in a real world situation. Okay, so application problem. So this ramp is too steep and would not pass inspection. Its slope is 0 0.6 repeating and the maximum of um, of the slope of an approved ramp must be less than 45 hundredths. Okay. Okay, so next um, we're looking at a few standards together here. So graph the functions expressed symbolically and show key features of the graph. All right, so we're going to graph the given line and we're going to give the key features and characteristics of that line. Okay, so um, x is equal to seven. This, um, a lot of times kids really just overthink this a lot. So the, gr the graph of the line x equals seven, if you think of your x, y uh, table of values, x will always equal seven, no matter what y is. So I can just choose some points for y, negative five, 
zero and five perhaps, and no matter what y is equal to, x will always equal seven. So if I plot these points, seven, negative five, seven, zero, seven, five, those are three points that are on my line, okay? And I just arbitrarily chose those y values. Okay, so that's our line. Um, so then our slope is undefined, right? We have a completely vertical line and we talked on the previous page about how to prove that algebraically, but um, we're not gonna rehash that. You can look back at that example if you wanna do it again. Okay, our y-intercept. Well, this line is parallel to the y-axis, so it's not going to cross, okay? the, the y-axis at all. So B is none, there is no y-intercept. Okay, our domain are, um, so how far left and how far right? Remember domain is a set of two x values, so left and right, okay? Um, it does not go left forever, right forever. It's not negative infinity to infinity, which we're really accustomed to having when we have a line that has a, um, a, a slope that's non, vertical or non-horizontal, but this domain is exactly at seven. So remember, domain is our x values, how far left, how far right. If you look at the sample table that we made, x values only exist at seven. So our domain is seven, and we do need to use the correct interval notation, okay? Um, we use the brackets because the seven is included. Okay, that the, um, the line does exist at seven, okay? Range, so this, remember, these are um, my values. Okay, in this case, we will have two of them. Okay, not just one. And this is um, how, how high up, how low down. This does go up forever, and it does go down forever. So this, the range is negative infinity to positive infinity, okay? And, we always write these um, ordered, this is not an ordered pair. We always write our domain and range. Smallest must be first, largest must be second. Again, mathematicians have a very specific way that we want things denoted so everybody knows what to expect and how to interpret it correctly. So we always, for domain and range, it's smallest number first, largest number second. Okay, state of solution. So state of solution, pick any number on the line. So I'm just going to choose the x-intercept, seven, zero. State a non-solution. Pick any point anywhere on the graph that's not on the line. Okay, I'm just going to choose the origin. All right, zeros. So where does our line cross the x-axis? It crosses the x-axis at seven. So x equals seven. So those are the key characteristics of our line. Let's do another line. This one's um, in standard form. And we have not learned how to graph from standard form yet. We've only so far learned how to graph from a slope intercept form. So we are going to go ahead and do that. We're gonna change it into slope intercept form. 3x minus 6y equals 18. We'll subtract 3x from each side. This gives us negative 6y equals negative three x plus 18. Okay, then we want to isolate the variable y. So each term gets divided by negative six. We get y equals one half x minus three. Y equals one half x minus three. So then we want to um, our, identify our key characteristics. We'll graph it first because so, for those of us who are visual, um, it helps to see the line when you're looking at the domain and range. It helps you to understand how to interpret those. So I like to graph it first. Some people like to give the characteristics first. I like kids to have a visual so they can understand those um, characteristics a little better. So let's graph it. Our y-intercept is negative three. Our slope is positive, one half. Okay, our slope again, we just said our slope is positive one half. 
our y-intercept is negative three, our domain, negative infinity to positive infinity, because it does, remember, these are both x values, okay? This is an x comma x for our domain. It's how far left, how far right. Range, how far up, how, far, how low down, how high up, so it goes down forever, because if you look at this graph, it goes down and left, down and left, down and left. It goes up and right, up and right, up and right, forever. So our range, up and down, it does go down forever, and it goes up forever. So our range is negative infinity to infinity. Okay, um, next, we have y equals negative, oh, state of solution, non-solution is zero. Okay, state of solution, I'll just use our y-intercept, um, zero, negative three, Stated non-solution, I'm just boring, so I pick the origin usually, zero, zero, okay? Um, zeros, where does it cross the x axis is our zero. Um, it crosses at six. All right, um, next, y equals negative two x plus three. All right, so our y-intercept is at positive three. Our slope is negative two, Okay, and let's do a few more points here. Okay, that's good enough. All right, so that's our line. Our slope was negative two. Our y-intercept was three. Domain, remember, is negative infinity to infinity. Okay, and if they wrote the word domain out for us, but if they didn't, we could also use the domain symbol. Our range, it goes up forever, it goes down forever. So our range is also negative infinity to infinity. State of solution, I'm just going to choose the y-intercept, zero, three. A non-solution, I'm just picking the origin. Okay, and then um, like you could choose 10 to 10, negative 10, whatever points you want, and then um, Zeros, they didn't list this on here, but let's go ahead and make sure we're constantly reviewing zeros. Okay, so where does our line cross the x-axis? Um, we're going to estimate for this one. We haven't learned how to calculate the zeros algebraically, but it's pretty straightforward, but we're not going to, that's not our target for today. So we're just going to estimate one and a half, okay? And because I don't know that that's exact, I'm going to say approximately equal to. Um, I didn't prove it at least. So then let's take a look at this problem, y equals negative six. Okay, so this line is going to cross through the y-axis at negative six. Okay, and for those of you who are not comfortable with graphing it, sorry, my depth perception was off for a second there. So for those of you who are not um, comfortable with graphing it this way, and you are just like, well, how did you know that it goes through the y-axis? Remember, you can always fall back on your table of values to prove this. So all of your y-values will equal negative six. So if you imagine a table of values, or if you write a table of values, all of your y-values equal negative six. Okay, so I'll just do 10, negative six, zero, negative six, negative 10, negative six, okay? So 10, negative six, zero, negative six, negative 10, negative six, okay? So if you're not comfortable with graphing it the way I did, you can always make that table of values if you just wanna be sure. Slope is, is perfectly level, so our slope is zero. Our y-intercept, it goes through the y-axis at negative six. Domain, it does go left and right forever. So our domain is negative infinity to infinity. Range, it does not go up and down forever. It only exists exactly at negative six, okay? So remember, domain is our x values, range is our y values. They tell us the range right here, okay? So our domain was negative infinity to infinity. Our range is negative six. Okay, state a solution. I'm boring, I, I'm predictable, right? I just like that, zero, negative six. I'm just gonna use my y-intercept. State a non-solution, pick any point that's not on the line. Okay, and then let's go ahead and talk about zeros because we can. 
Why not? Okay, it does not cross the x-axis. All right, it's parallel to the x-axis, so it doesn't have any zeros. Okay, so that standard was um, graph functions expressed symbolically show key features of the graph by hand in simple cases, which is what we did. Understand that the graph of an equation in two variables is the set of all of its solutions. So find some solution, understand that you can choose any point on the line to get a solution, and then identify and um, correctly denote domain and range. So a lot going on here on this page. So a lot of really important algebraic um, standards here. Okay, so that was page one and two of the unit three review. We'll stop the recording here and do another part um, together at another time.